here on the afternoon show. Kevin Cole with you on KEXP down in the performance phase with Jenny Lewis, who is playing tonight at the Moore Theater. Welcome to KEXP. Hello. Great to be here. Great to be back. Nice new space. Yeah, it's wow. amazing, right? Yeah, a definite yeah. Uh, upgrade. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. We feel so fortunate and honored uh, to be able to have this space. And um, absolutely love the new album, On the Line. Looking forward to talking about that. But how about hearing a few songs from the album first? Oh, sure. No problem. Um, we're going to start out here with uh, the first song on the album. Uh, it's called... Uh, head's gonna roll. Jenny Lewis, live on KEXP. Since I haven't talked to you, I dream about your baby blues and wonder why you stopped getting high. Even though we were just friends, I Think of us as bookends and I'm gonna love you till I die And you think you're going to heaven and that I am going to hell And that I'm gonna keep on dancing till I hear that ringing bell Narcoleptic poet from Duluth And we disagreed about everything From Elliot Smith to Grenadine He fell asleep and I put up the roof And he took me to a graveyard I thought he'd kill me there me on the corner while the nuns of Harlem stay. Oh, heads gonna roll, baby. Everybody's gotta pay that toll. Ladies, 
out of my head I was a girl in a black Corvette Getting head in the shadows I was a beetle floater In a bottle of red I was a party clown A weightless path to my own laugh Gave me the creeps I watched a scorpion Crawl across my sheets It's been a while But we communicate psychically Now you're at my door Trick or treat Jenny Lewis and her amazing band live on KEXP. Three songs there from the new album, uh, Party Clown, Wasted Youth, Head's Gonna Roll, all from On the Line, an album filled with songs about fighting demons, uh, about escaping, losing oneself, finding oneself, maybe a little bit of regret, some desire, complicated relationships, and Fuji apples. You just read my epitaph. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, sounding so great. Thank you for being here. Now, you've been making music for like 20 years. Almost 20 years. And I've read that uh, you said that this is the first time making this album that you felt like a a bona fide professional musician. Well, I've always felt like an artist from the moment that I can remember. But uh, going into uh, Capitol Records Studio B, and having a, a parking spot right in front of that great studio, I felt at, you know, 41 yeah. years old that finally, you know, it was, it was super pro. <laughs> that is super cool. You had a, a great band on the record, and uh, 
back Don was, Ringo Starr. And also you mentioned Capitol Studios, uh, Studio B. Do you feel like in historic places like that where so many amazing albums were made that some of that history gets seeped into your music or your songs? Well, I, I hope so. I, I know that um, just biologically speaking, I sang in the Neumann microphone that Frank Sinatra sang wow. into. So I would imagine that uh, my, my spit is sort of mingling <laughs> with his <laughs> DNA yeah. somewhere. So, I, yeah, I th- you know, and I don't have rules about recording. I don't think you need to go into a beautiful studio to make a record. I, I make songs on my phone, you know, on GarageBand. I, my band, Rilo Kylie, started out doing kind of er, early digital home recording. So I don't, I don't think it's necessary, but it definitely has a, a resonance being in a room where so many great songs were cut. Yeah, I think the, the music, the songs, the ideas transcend the, uh, the equipment. Uh, but, but certainly, um, yeah, you get a sense of history that's maybe maybe inspiring in places like that i'm totally inspiring and and you didn't mention uh uh, jim keltner oh yeah he he also played drums on the record he played double drums with ringo on red bull and hennessy which um they had done for the concert for bangladesh Mm -hmm. so they had a, a rapport but just being in the room with these players who have played on some of the best songs ever written uh, Jim Keltner played on Imagine. Yeah. Obviously, Ringo. Don was uh, produced Nick of Time, one of my favorite albums of all time. So to have that support, just to, to feel the song supported in that way and appreciated, it was really uh, such a wonderful experience. Yeah, it must be uh, wow. just an amazing feeling knowing that those artists, you know, are supporting you, have your back, confidence builder. Yeah, and they want to play on so- tunes. Yeah, and the album sounds amazing. Thank you. There's such a flow. It just, uh, it's got such an ease to it. It takes its time, which has been a little challenging live in context with some of my earlier, more sort of emo yeah. <laughs> material that we put in the set. Like, it's really mature in that it takes its time. And so we have to be patient with the songs and just let them be what they are. They're amazing. Back to a little bit of the studio. Like I had read that in that studio, you played the piano that Carol King used for tapestry. Yeah, man. And at the end of Dogwood, the piano part at the end of that, I was like, wow, that sounds exactly like that piano. <laughs> <laughs> very, very special piano. Um, I was terrified to play and sing at the same time. I wanted to have uh, Ben Montench, who was the keyboard player who uh, is in the Heartbreakers, I was hoping he would do the piano parts. And when I got to the studio, he said, no, you have to play piano. That's your inst- that You sing differently when you play piano. Have confidence in your uh, heart and soul chords, which you just heard on Party Club. <laughs> it's basically heart and soul. So since 2014, uh, when you released your last album, you've really gone through a lot. Ended a long-term relationship. Lost both of your parents. Uh, you wrote this album in between hospital visits with your mother. Sorry, she passed away. Yeah. And um, how, uh, how did those experiences, especially the experience uh, going in and out of the hospital, impact the songs? Because you were writing them at that time, right? I was, yeah. I, well, life and art, for me, they're kind of parallel. So I, I always write. As I live and I write to comfort myself, to Mm -hmm. distract myself, it's just something that I do. So I just kind of kept on throughout the personal things that happened in my life. Um, But with the song uh, Little White Dove on on the record, that I would just sort of like get up the courage every day to go see my mom. And those little kind of phrases help me make it down the hallway and... Help me, like, open the door. and The phrases, the, the lyrics? The, the lyrics. The the songs? Yeah, they just kind of breadcrumbed me <laughs> yeah. to where I needed to be. Kind of related to that, uh, KEXP over the last couple of years has developed a series of programming that we call Music Heals, where we, 
will, uh, over the course of a day on air, address an issue like uh, cancer, death and dying, mental health, addiction and recovery, pretty heavy themes, uh, and will share listeners' stories about their experiences with wh- whatever the theme is. Like this Thursday, it's addiction and dying or addiction and recovery. Mm. Um, but the songs, also the role that music played, either in their process, their journey, their grieving, their recovery. Um, so, as an artist, it sounds like for you, music goes way beyond just the subject matter. It's it's part of the processing of what you're going through at any given point. It, yes, it can be. And, and I believe in the healing power of music on a frequency level. There are healing frequencies. And I think that's what chanting and ohm or whatever it is yeah. that seems kind of far out. I think it has a, a, a resonance in your body, a biological resonance. So, so I'm just fortunate that I can kind of walk through my life and have the art. And then ideally someone going through a similar situation can use the songs to heal. Do you have listeners uh, and fans uh, come up to you after shows and and say that? Thank you for songs that have gotten them through certain points in their life? I do. And it it moves me every time. Yeah, it's got to be a remarkable experience. It is remarkable. And I just don't think of myself in that way. You know, I just do my thing and write my songs and it's so intensely personal. And so then to two or three years later, you put out an album, you're kind of onto the next set of problems for someone to like remind you like, hey, you got through this and so so did I, thank you. Yeah, um, that, that's part of uh, really what we're trying to accomplish when we do these days is, is not just kind of draw some light on an issue like mental health that might have a stigma to it or addiction and recovery, but also in doing so, really let listeners know who are out there listening that they're not alone, that there's something and others they can connect to and there's a community. Well, I think there's a more open dialogue, especially with regard to um, addiction, recovery, and mental health, and the two are, are often combined. You know, there's a dual diagnosis, and so I so appreciate that we're talking about this because it was kind of taboo to talk about mental health when I was a kid growing up in the 90s even. We didn't talk about that stuff. So I think music is an important uh, part of the process. Um, Outside of, you know, vibrationally, like um, Kirtan sessions, chanting, just ohm, whatever, uh, are there certain songs that you've turned to at times that have helped you either, you know, provided comfort or solace or help transcend? Well, I'm a a big Bob Dylan fan, um, and I always return to Time Out of Mind. And that record I listened to with my mother in the hospital and in hospice, and I just want to thank Bob (laughs) (laughs) for helping me get through that time, um, standing in the doorway that, like, it just, it just really helped me yeah. out. So yeah. Is that the album that has Sugar Town on it? Uh, that, that might not be what no. it's called. But it's a Daniel Lanois record. Oh yeah. He produced it at this little theater called Teatro uh, in uh, Santa Barbara County, I think, up there, Oxnard. And uh, uh, yeah, it's just a legendary, uh, swampy. It's Jenny Lewis, amazing band, live here on KEXP, playing tonight at the Moore Theater and tomorrow night at the uh, Crystal Ballroom in Portland. Uh, how about one more song? Or, All right, I'm yeah. just going to grab my guitar over here that we call the Dogwood Guitar because it is painted with dogwood flowers. We've got Jason Crosby on, on keys, Dylan Day on guitars. Solomon Dorsey on bass, and I don't know the cello and violin players' names, but hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get a wicked. You got me lying on my bed. Hallelujah. All will be forgiven. Why you gotta act like that? Make me beg for you.
Jenny Lewis and Band live on KEXP, the afternoon show. Red Bow and Hennessy, the track from the uh, beautiful new album On the Line. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely chatting with you. Yeah, you too. Really appreciate you uh, and everybody taking the time to play before the show tonight at the Moore Theater. Well, now we're all warmed up. (laughs) That's good. And uh, Crystal Ballroom in Portland tomorrow night again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, huge thanks to uh, the KEXP audio video t- crew and also Amber and Allison on hospitality, Matt running the board, Kevin on sound, and uh, Kelsey, Matilde, and all the donors that make the in-studios here at KEXP possible. Listener-powered KEXP. Discover new music at kexp.org.